say amen. amen. Church say amen again. Amen. Some of y'all wouldn't say it. <laughs> That's all right. You're probably sleepy. I feel you. Amen. It is so good for us to be here. Just one more time. It's good to see my, my brother, my covenant brother, in a different position. Amen. 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 It's been a lot of, lot of prayers and, and tears and long nights, but you have made it my brother. And so I've been summoned by the preacher of this church before he get up. I got to sing a song. Y'all done sing so many, I don't know which one to sing. But I'm going to sing something. I'm gonna, and I'm going to set out. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I think that's the one. Hope is the one, Kenny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all ready? Well, y'all ready to come in with me? Praise the Lord. Follow the leader. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I come, I come to receive, to receive my Receive, 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 receive,
one that I consider the dean of preachers, especially for Little Rock. My first introduction to Little Rock was the brother Thomas Hardaway. Doc, just stand, let me look at you real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God for them and to, to all of you, it's just good to be here. Mike, what time is it? Thank you. Uh, we're getting ready to go home. I know some of y'all got evening service and I've got a date with my bed tonight. <laughs> I'm still in the process of getting unpacked and getting settled. Uh, but for the moments that are ours to share today, we just want to have a little church. Amen? Amen. Come with me to Proverbs chapter. Proverbs chapter 3. Now, Lord, we come because we need to hear from you. You've spoken to us on so many occasions, and now we need to hear once more from your word. Personally, Father, I thank you for another preaching privilege, a place to preach, and for people to preach to. And I pray now that you would give me power to preach. To make my mind think your thoughts and make my mouth speak your word. Simply hide me behind the cross of your son, Jesus. It's through Jesus that we pray and ask all things. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. It's our custom that we stand for the reading of the word of God, so if you will indulge us. Proverbs chapter 3. Verses are five, verse number six, and I am this time coming from the thundering diction of the King James Version. It reads this way Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. One more time, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I want to tag this text this afternoon, curing my trust issues. Curing my trust issues. God has He's all he is, and he has set me free. I'm so thankful that my God, God, God has sworn. Oh, can 
I told him, Brother King, it depends on how much you pay. <laughs> Anything can be negotiated. But though, though I'm licensed to carry, though I've got the right to carry, because of the way our community is set up, I choose not to because I don't want to be on the wrong end of justice. Because I have trust issues. Is, is there anybody in the house with me this afternoon that would agree that you like me, you got some trust issues about, about some things. And as we begin this new year, I want to let you know that your trust issues can be cured. Your trust issues can be cured. Y'all got time for it this afternoon? Here it is. There is a remedy for your trust issues. There is a remedy for your trust issues. There is a remedy for your trust issues. Would you say that with me? There is a remedy for your trust issues. Say it again. There is a remedy for your trust. One more time. There is a remedy for your trust. That's point number one. There is a remedy to your trust for your trust issues. And that remedy is simply this. To trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now, literally, what that term means, I know I've got scholars in the house today, so if I mess up, you just pick up where I leave off. But that term trust literally means to transfer weight to. Uh, literally, it means that with every fiber of my being, with everything that makes me who I am, I throw my hands into the air, I throw my feet into the air, I lay back on God knowing that he's going to hold me up. Now, if you're able, real quick, put your hands into the air. Come on. Put uh, everybody in the house, if you're able. If you got two good hands, or if you got one hand and another, throw them in the air real quick. Put your feet into the air. Put your feet into the air. Come on, put your, if, if your legs still work, put your feet into the air. Yeah, do that. Now, put them all down. That's, that's literally, that's literally what the proverbial writer is telling you to do with God. Literally. Uh, when I ask you to put your hands into the air, when I ask you to put your feet into the air, none of y'all got out of the seats to look up under the benches to see if all of the screws were in place. You didn't go ask Barbara, is the insurance paid up just in case I fall, just in case something breaks? That's literally, that is literally what the proverbial writer is telling us to do today as we begin this new year. Don't worry about what happened last year. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. Don't worry about what happened last week, but throw your hands into the air, throw your feet into the air, lay back on God, and know that he's going to hold you up. Literally, trust in him with everything that makes you who you are. Don't worry about your status in society. Don't worry about what family you come from or y'all ain't talking to me. Don't worry about the type of car you drive, the house that you live in, but put all of your dependence on God if you can your care on him. I promise he'll show you that he cares for you. I know I'm not at the end of the message just yet, but is there anybody that has seen God be a way maker, a promise keeper, a miracle worker? He's been a bridge over troubled water. He's been a rock. Is there anybody in the house today that can declare because I learned how to trust God, I've seen him work? Now, um, that's the remedy. And Robert, the thing that I've learned about a remedy is that sometimes a remedy don't feel good and it don't taste good. <laughs> Have we got any help in the room this afternoon? Every now and then, you got to take a remedy that don't feel good, it don't taste good. You really don't like the remedy, but at the end of the day, it works. <laughs> Years ago when I was an undergrad, when I was an undergrad, uh, back at Southwestern Christian College, I, Kenny, I got a cough that I couldn't get rid of. And I was in Alabama, I was on my way back to Texas, and I stopped by my grandmother's house, as it was my custom, uh, to, to stop through there on the way to the house to get me a good meal, just to get also to get a little change, as she would call it, so I could make it on down the road. And Mike, she heard me coughing. <coughs> She said, baby, what's wrong? I said, Grandma, I got this cough that I hadn't been able to get rid of. And she said, I got just the thing for it. Uh, when she went to the kitchen, she had one of them kitchens. She kept baking, reaching that at you. You know, you put on your chest when you got a cold. She had a whole bunch. 
bunch of other stuff in that I ain't never seen before. But all I knew is that if she said it worked right the way it did work. Uh, and so I went and she said, I got just the thing for she pulled out a bread big old tablespoon and said, hey, I want you to take two of these. <laughs> and before I took it, I said, what is it? What, what, what in the world are you trying to give me? She said, no, baby, you just take it first and then I'll tell you what it is later. Terry Allen, I took it. I took it, it was some of the nastiest stuff I could clap. I wanted to say some words, but because I was at grandma house, I said, I ain't gonna do that. But I took it. I didn't feel better right then, but she said, baby, you gotta keep on taking it. <laughs> Finally, she told me what it was. She said, it's a little cast oil in there, a little rock candy, a little lemon juice, and then a little liquor. Y'all pray, grandma was supposed to give me liquor. I was still in mind every time I wasn't going to have that. But we ain't going to tell nobody. That's going to stay between us. That's going to stay between us. Now, I'm going to tell you, I didn't feel better immediately. All right. Come on, I didn't feel better immediately. Don't miss your chance to shout this afternoon. I didn't feel better immediately. Oh, uh, but what happened after a few days of continuing to take that stuff, I started getting the sweats and started sweating some stuff out. Uh, but eventually, I started feeling better, but I had to keep on taking the medicine. Come here, child of God. You may not see your situation turn around today. You may not see it turn around tomorrow. But as long as you continue to put your trust and your faith in God, eventually you will see your situation turn around. You got to keep taking the remedy. You got to keep on taking it. That's your remedy. That's number one. But number two, there's a reason why you have trust issues. There is a there is a reason why you have trust issues. There's a that's a reason why you have trust issues. Would you say that with me? There is a reason why you have trust issues. Say it again. There is a reason why you have trust issues. One more time. There is a reason why you have trust issues. Here's the reason. The text says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding. There it is. That's the reason why you have trust issues. Because you've been trying to lean on your own understanding. I ain't got no help in the room, huh? Uh, do you not realize that it is virtually impossible for you to lean on yourself? Lewis Smith, if I lean to the right, I'm going to fall. If I lean to the left, I'm going to fall. If I lean forward, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall on something. If I lean backwards, I'm going to fall. Literally, I can't lean on myself because I'm going to fall. If the truth has got to be told, you really, you really don't know what you think you know. That's the problem that many of us have today. We are some of the most ignorant people that we've ever met in our lives. And rather than just telling you, I don't know, we want to act like we know what we don't know, but we really don't know what we don't know because we don't know that we don't know. <laughs> Just telling you all the way, I don't know. We want to act real educated while well, ponder for a moment and trying to come up with some deep, illogical, philosophical answer when in reality we really don't know. When I began my master's program a couple of years ago, I was talking with a gentleman from Nashville by the name of Charles Beeman, and he told me, he said, Rex, let me just encourage you as you start this program that education is nothing more than the continued discovery of how ignorant you are. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't like that, huh? Let me tell you one more time. Education is nothing more than the continued discovery of how ignorant you are. Literally, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Here it is. Here it is. Some of us have gotten smart. And we realize that we can't lean on ourselves. And so what happens is we try to look at other people and because they appear to be stronger than we are, we believe they can hold us up. Have you got any help in the room? Literally, I know my issues. But when I look at you, you appear to be stronger than I am. You appear to be bigger than I am. And I believe that you should be strong enough to hold me up. Is there anybody in the house that's bigger than me today? Thank you. 
Brother Hardaway, come in for a minute, please. Now, come on now, I know I'm getting older. Come on now. Thank you for time, but you know, come on. Thank you for time. Man. You need some help up there? Listen, when I look at these two men, both of them are taller than I am. Both of them appear to be stronger than I am. And in my weak moments, I would go to them thinking that they could hold me up. But the problem is, I don't know what's ailing these men. I don't know that one of them may have a bad back and one of them may have weak knees. And struggle with some things. They appear to be strong. When I look at them from the outside looking in, I believe everything is all right and I should be able to lean on them because they have the height, they have the weight, they have the strength, supposedly. But what happens when, when Jack tries to take on his weight and my weight? What happens when Brother Hardaway tries to take on my weight and his weight? Eventually, the knees start getting out. Eventually, that back start hurting. And then, when he falls, I fall. But rather than saying we fell, I say he dropped me. I say he dropped me. Come here, child of God. That's the problem that so many of us have. We look at other people. We look at mama. We look at daddy. We look at sister. We look at brother. We look at big mama. We look at our friends. And they supposedly should have been able to hold us up. But when times got hard, we didn't realize that they had their own issues that they were dealing with. And when that burden got heavy, my burden got heavy, we both fell. But rather than saying we both fell, I said he dropped me. Thank y'all. Then he, he dropped me. He dropped me. And because I let him drop me, I've got trust issues. I don't trust anybody else to hold me up. Santeria, stand up. How old are you now? When I first met Zan, he was three years old. Sit down. <laughs> now, let me show you the connection. Justin is my best friend, my brother. But y'all talk about me around him, he'll fight you. <laughs> he got beat at him, I got salt. Y'all know what I'm saying? When I first met Zan, Zan is Justin's nephew. I was at the house in, in Hernando. Zan was a little bitty fella, he was three years old at the time. Running around the house, he probably don't even remember that. See, yeah, I'm, I'm finna tell the story, but Malik, Malik don't like this story. I remember, I remember, he told me. I remember, I remember. Zan was running around the house. I love kids. And so, as I'm around the house, we're sitting down talking, Zan ran by me. And I picked him up, and I threw him into the air. And his eyes got real big, and when I caught him, he said, sir, please, 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 don't cry. <laughs> I figured, I'm new to the house. It's gonna take him a little while to get used to me. Put him down, he kept running. A little while later, he came back. I picked him back up, threw him to the air. His eyes got big again. He said, sir, please, 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 don't drop me. I figured, it may take him a little bit longer, Kenny. Get used to me. So I stayed for a couple of days. By day three, he ought to be used to me by now. He'd run around the house again. I picked him up on to that. His eyes got real big once again. He said, sir, please, 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 don't drop me. I asked him when I called him. I held him there in my arms. I said, Sam, why do you keep saying, please, 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 don't drop me? That day, he said, I don't want you to drop me like a leak drop me. <laughs> and say, Malik didn't drop him, Jacob dropped him. <laughs> now, I don't know which one of y'all it was, but somebody dropped Zan. <laughs> I think it was Malik too. <laughs> Zan, you remember who dropped you? Which one was it? Neither. We're going to talk about lying after church. 
The reaction is that you acknowledge him in everything that you do. That's the reaction. I skip that. That's the reaction. Write that down. Take it home to the house. That's the reaction. Your remedy, your reason, your reaction. Fourthly and finally, this afternoon when I'm in my seat, not only is there a remedy, not only is there a reason, not only is there a reaction, but fourthly and finally, there is a result. Yes, sir. If you take the remedy, watch this. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Yeah. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And watch this. Yes, yes, and he shall yes, direct thy path. Yes, that's the end result. Yes, that's, the, that's the result if you follow the remedy. Uh, he will direct your path. I love the NIV rendering of it where he says that he will make the crooked path straight. Yeah. He'll literally straighten those things out that are crooked in your life. Literally, it's the picture of a chiropractor putting you back in place. Yeah. Literally, it takes some time to get you reset and to get you refocused. But as long as you continue to take the remedy, I stopped by to tell somebody this afternoon that eventually your path will begin to straighten out. Literally, days will get a little bit brighter. Days will get a little bit easier. You can start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. It, it, there's a song that says, it won't always be like this. God will perfect that, that he is concerning me. Sooner or later, it'll turn around in my favor. It's turning around for me. But can I tell you today, child of God, in order for things to get better in your life, you got to start taking the prescribed medicine. You you can't just take it when you want to, but you got to take your daily dose. You got to study to show yourself approved. You got to get into his word. You got to have conversation with God, not just when you need something from him, but you got to talk to him and get into an intimate place with God. And may I tell you today that when you get into an intimate place, place with God. He has a, a way of just doing things for you just because he loves you. He wakes you up in the morning, yeah, but there's a blessing that he wants to give you. He gives you air to breathe, yeah, but there's so many things that he wants to do for you, but you got to get into a place where you continue to trust him with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, act like you know him, and in the end, he will make you pay. Strength. You got trust issues today. But I stopped by to tell somebody those trust issues can be cured. You just simply trust in God. Even when it gets difficult. Even when it gets hard. Trust in Him. Don't lean on what you think, you know, because you really don't know nothing. But if you trust in Him, I promise He'll make your path straight. You're here today, you're not a child of God. We offer Christ to you by faith, being a repentant believer, confession that he's the Son of God. We'll baptize you today for the remission of your sins. We already had one baptism today. Is Malcolm here? Malcolm in the house. All right, Malcolm got baptized this morning. We thank God for him. But uh, we still got some more clothes back there. We still got some more water in the pool. You can give your life to God today. If you're standing in the need of prayer, However you need God to move, you need some help dealing with your trust issues. If you need to come, come on, stand to your feet. You need to come right now. Hold to his hand, to my God, something changing. You ought to hold to his hand, to my God, something changing. Time. 